you ever fear waking up in 5, 10 or even 20 years from now? Looking back, reflecting, disappointed by all the things you didn't do because you were terrified to fail. Well, welcome back to another episode of Tech Talks Daily, where today we're venturing into the realms of intuition, creativity and the courage to embrace your true potential. I'm your host, Neil C. Hughes, and today we're going to be diving into the inspiring world of Jennifer Jane Young, author of a new book called Say Yes to Your Yes, How to Trust Your Gut and Take the Leap. And her journey is testament to overcoming anxiety, anxiety and embracing entrepreneurship, all through the power of intuition. And her book isn't just a narrative, it's an invitation to step outside of comfort zones and take imperfect action. And yes, it's about using intuition as a compass in building life for transformation, alignment and fulfilment. But this is a tech podcast and Jennifer's story intertwines the fascinating interplay between technology and intuition, showing how digital tools can amplify our inner voice and lead us towards sustainable success. So in today's conversation, we're going to be exploring Jennifer's background, her entrepreneurial journey, the insights from her book her perspective on technology as a tool for amplifying intuitive leadership, and much more. So buckle up and hold on tight, because no matter where you're living in the world, it's time for me to beam your ears all the way to Canada, where we're going to dive in and discover how saying yes can unlock a path of deeper harmony, flow, and success. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell everyone listening a little about who you are and what you do. Yes, I do a lot of different things depending on uh, where my intuition leads me. But uh, I would say like the overarching theme of what I do in my work is I help people just really believe in themselves and in their dreams, um, find the courage to, you know, take leaps and take risks and take action and then support them on that journey. And I work mostly with entrepreneurs. Um But I guess my official title is I'm an intuitive business and leadership advisor. Um, So I help entrepreneurs and leaders uh, take that next step forward into their growth and transformation through the channel of the right brain, through intuition and creativity. And a question I've got to ask, I ask most of my guests this, is what's your origin story here? What put you on this path? And and how would you describe your relationship with technology as well? I, I appreciate I probably threw about three or four questions at you there, but I'm curious what put you on this path? Uh, Deep suffering is what put me on this path. I always say that entrepreneurship is what saved me from debilitating anxiety. Um, I just wasn't, I just didn't fit into the traditional world. Um, You know, school was always hard for me. I was always kicked out of class or in the principal's office or in the hole, which was this tiny room with no windows where they would put the bad kids for the day. Um, And so my journey started really with that. And me, um, from that place of like suffering or struggle, really wanting to find my path, find my way in the world in a way that would feel good to me. Like there was something deep in me that kept saying like, there's no way that this is how I have to live my life. Like that doesn't, that doesn't seem to, to make sense. Um, and technology, came, I, I have such so much gratitude for technology. And I, a lot of people don't know this, but I'm a total tech nerd. I love technology. Um, I always say that I lead my business with the moon and with the sauna or with my system, you know. Um, and when I leaped into entrepreneurship, like literally threw myself into it, leaving my um, my corporate job, the first thing I wanted to do was build a website. I was like, I need to, because I started as a yoga teacher and I was like, I need, I need a place to show what I do. So I taught myself how to build a website uh, and continued building websites for over a decade. And then I just, like any system I could learn that would help me run my business or share my work with the world, I just like dove into. And so I still love technology, even though I'm very much an intuitive, I'm, I'm very balanced left brain, right brain. Um, it's still hard for me to get my hands out of my website. I just, I love technology so much. I think it's such a, a great way to amplify what we're doing in our work. 
And I'm curious, how did that path lead to you writing your new book, Say Yes to Your Yes? I mean, straight away listening to your story, it's clear that you've always said yes to your yes, but I feel there's got to be a story there, right? Yeah. I mean, it's funny because people are writing to me now and they're like, I'm going around and I'm telling all my friends and family, just say yes to your yes. <laughs> I think it's something that people crave so badly, you know? Um, and for me, it, it's funny because technology was the way for me to say yes to my yes. It's like, I want to start a business. Okay, yes, I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to build the website to go with it, or I'm going to start the social media to go with it. So it was a tool that helped me take action, you know? Um, and my book, it's, you know, I've, I've been writing it for a decade. I've rewrote it about five times at a minimum. Um, and my book is, is everything I taught myself over the last 13 plus years on what it takes to build a really powerful relationship with your intuition and then what it takes to find the courage to say yes to it and then do the thing because that's where people stop right yeah it's like the desire the yearning is there and then analysis paralysis they stop there and they don't do the thing and so my work is all about doing the thing like i want people to take action because that's when you start to unlock flow in your life and it's not it's about imperfect action it's about letting things get get messy while you're trying to find your way in a way that feels good to you so my book is really like a recap of everything i taught myself and i bridge um, or i merge together um, my background as a yoga therapist because i'm also a yoga therapist so i bring in physiology and i talk about the brain and the nervous system in relation to intuition and creativity and what it takes to build that um, internal environment, essentially. It's not external. In order to live an intuitive life or lead an intuitive business, it's all about nurturing a very specific internal environment so that you can then do that from a place of being empowered and calm and not from a place of recklessness, if that makes sense. It really does. And one of the many reasons that your story resonated with me is I'm also someone that said yes to my yes. I trusted my gut, took the leap from the corporate IT day job to start my own business, right? why I'm talking to you here today. But I still remember, like it was yesterday, the fear of doing that. And it, we are recording this at the time of year when many people want to make 2024 their year. And I want to kind of try to harness some of that energy. So what advice would you offer someone listening who wants to say yes to their intuition, give themselves permission to take the leads towards life that they've been dreaming of, to outgrow who they have been and honour what they always know they could become? Because this is the core message of your book here. So what advice would you give to anyone listening who's nodding their head to everything that I've just said? Yeah. So the main advice that I always give people is stop over planning everything. Like you really have to get out of your left brain, which is like the logic, uh, the comfort, the known information. It's where um, we have like security and step in, like play more in the right brain field where it's it's almost like becoming a child again. It's like, oh, what happens if I put this and this together? Oh, what happens if I put this block on top of that block? It might all fall apart, but maybe it won't. You know, and so it's really approaching things from that. And the main advice is one step at a time. For me, intuitive living, it was like, I have a nudge. I'm, my intuition is inviting me to do something. And anytime I think about the next 50, 100 steps or like, how am I going to figure all of this out? I get stuck in analysis paralysis. So it's always and only about that one next step. So, okay, my intuition is nudging me to write a book. I want to explore this. What is the one next step I can take? And then you take that one step and then that one step guides you to the next step and then the next step. So you really have to be willing to play in the unknown, to not have it all figured out and to let things get messy. Like yeah. if you want to build a beautiful, expansive life, micromanaging doesn't work for that. 
You know, you have to release your grip. You have to um, let things be imperfect, at least at the beginning. 100% with you on that. And I think it's also important to remember that you don't have to do it all on your own like you may have done 10, 15, 20 years ago. There's so many different tech tools out there that can help you. In fact, I was reading about um, a movement of people that have built entire businesses using chat GPT and generative AI. They they began by saying, this is who I am. This is my skill set. What business should I do? It gave a suggestion and they just kept building from there. Okay, I do that, but what should I sell? And then it, it come up with suggestions of what they could sell. Yeah, but now, now I need a website. How do I build a website? And just by following that process, they ended up with a, a successful business out of that. But I'm curious, what role do you see technology playing in, in helping people on this journey and, and making that journey a little bit easier? Well, it's interesting that you talk about ChatGPT because I was so resistant to it. I was like, mm -hmm. I'm not touching it. I'm not going there. I want the human touch in everything that I do. And a friend of mine the other day, because we're both, I don't know if you know a little bit about human design, but we're both generators. And generators, our strategy is to respond to things. And she was like, Jen, chat GPT was like built for generators because it allows you to respond. You put a question, gives you an answer, and then you can respond. And so it creates this nice flow. Um, and, you know, for me, I see technology really... Um, just helping to amplify the work that I'm doing. Like I, I tested it the other day and I, I pasted a chapter of the book in it and I was like, you know, can you pull out 10 quotes so that I could use on social media? And it pulled out like the most beautiful sections of that chapter. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is like incredible, you know? So it allows you just like, you know, in business when we say delegate and hire out so you can focus on your zone of genius systems and technology allow us to do the same thing, right? So how can we use systems and technology to free ourselves so that we can focus more on our zone of genius? And that's where I get really excited about technology. And, you know, my life is managed in Asana. Like I, I just, I love Asana. It's project management system. Uh, we've been together for many, many years <laughs> and it's a lifelong um, you know, relationship. And I think there's a lot of different tools like that. Um, we just, you know, discovered a new tool that we're going to be using for the School of Intuitive Leadership, which I'm super excited about. And it's going to allow us to have like this virtual reality experience together in a very, that actually builds more human connection. And so when you release your resistance around technology, you can see just how purposeful it can be if you use it intentionally you know yeah i always say on this podcast every day that technology works best when it brings people together and i love what you're doing here by yes the t leveraging the technology side but also the importance of the human connection and how those two worlds actually can converge for the better and we've all scrolled down our news feeds at all the the uh, dystopian view of the technology that's waiting on the horizon, et cetera. But I always try and restore the balance. So are there any other tech trends that particularly excite you and make you hopeful and optimistic about the future? Well, I would say um, this new uh, system that we're going to be using for the school where we actually get to be like in a, it, you know, it's kind of similar to Zoom. It's like a virtual office. Um that gets me really excited because I generally have a rule where I use technology as long as it doesn't uh, sacrifice the human experience. So I really want to keep that in everything I'm doing in my business. Um, so that gets me really, really excited. And I would say, um, you know, as much as I still have some resistance around everything, chat, GPT, AI and all that, I'm really curious to play with it. Like that is the energy I'm coming from um, with it. And I, I hope that as we move forward now in this next decade, that we have more and more tools to bring us together. I feel like social media um, in some weird way created a lot of distance with people. Um, and... I'm hoping that we're going to have more technology that's going to bring us close together again and create more human intimate experiences with people so that 
you know, we don't just fall into a completely automated world, you know? Yeah, yeah. We've seen the the impacts of echo chambers and people hiding in their own little camps and so much division online. So it'd be great to see the back of that. And on this podcast, I've, I've also spoken with, I'm coming up to 2,600 tech leaders now. And people always ask me, Neil, what, what, what are the common traits that these people share? And uh, we've all seen the books and the newspaper articles around five traits of successful leaders. So whenever I'm asked that question, I, I think the co- most common themes are actually serendipity, following their intuition. So I'm curious, can you expand on on how leaning into this can come in so many different forms? Because it's something that we don't get taught about enough, I think. But the universe is always almost nudging people in the right direction. But you need to look out for those sides and act on your intuition, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, for me, the best way to lean into intuition, creativity, imagination, whatever happens in the right brain field is first by slowing down, right? Because if we're always in our stress response, going, 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 moving, 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 not leaving space in our day, uh, we actually kind of uh, mute our intuition and creativity, or at least it makes it a lot harder to hear, you know? So slowing down, And doing things to activate your relaxation response in your nervous system, whatever that is. For some people, it's meditation. For some people, it's going for a walk in the woods. For some people, it's reading. Um, The more often you can activate your relaxation response, the easier it is going to be to connect to all of that great stuff that we're always craving, you know. And we're not taught this in school. And one of my big missions is to start bringing this to young people, um, we're actually going to be launching um, a membership at the School of Intuitive Leadership for young adults from 16 to 24 um, to really support them and seeing the limitless potential, like we talk about a lot, that is available to them in the world. Um, because the world is very much built around a left brain system, which is which is okay, but partly we need the left brain. I talk about this a lot. Without the left brain, we'd just be like these floating creative ideas and nothing would, you know, we wouldn't make things happen, but um, it's it needs a bit more balance. And so I really want to reach particularly young adults who are just getting their life started and thinking about what they want to do um, into our program so that they can see that early on, you know, so they don't have to learn this when they're 40, 50, 60, and be like, oh, I wish someone would have taught me this in school because that's what I feel. That's why the, I always say the school of intuitive leadership is the school I I would have always wanted or I would have always needed, you know? Mm-hmm. So, you know, to bring a bit of humor to this, you can lean into your intuition in a very woo-woo way if you want, which sometimes I do with my tarot cards and all that stuff. I love that stuff. Um, and you can lean into your intuition in a very uh, practical way also, you know, it's not all woo-woo. It's actually th- the the most successful leaders out there are intuitive leaders. So we need to teach people more and more how to access that part of ourselves because that's when life just really gets so good, you know? 100%. And- You've obviously dedicated months of your life to bringing this book to life. Getting you're pulling your heart and soul into it, getting all the ideas and experiences down on paper. And I know how lengthy that period is. So I'm curious if I was to take you back to day one when you were um, putting the structure together of this book. What was that that one takeaway that you wanted every reader to take away from this book? Say yes to your yes. What was that one takeaway that you wanted people to walk away with? Um, I would say the most important takeaway for me is to, for, for people to get from the book is you don't need to settle for anything less than what you're yearning for. You really don't. M- the majority of people I feel are settling because what what they're feeling inside or what they're being nudged towards feels unrealistic or reckless or crazy or what are people going to think of me or what if I fail or what is what if this doesn't all of those what ifs they don't matter you know that's it's part of life you know taking risks is part of life and so I really want people to leave feeling like what I'm feeling 
what I'm desiring, what I'm craving matters. And it's speaking to me for a reason. And I don't need to settle. There is a way forward with this. And for people to give themselves permission to go explore those yearnings that they have. That's, I want people to play. I want people to take little leaps, big leaps, whatever they want, but take action from that place of intuitive wisdom. And don't, like Wayne Dyer says, don't let, your, don't let your music die inside of you. Like let that intuitive nudge come to life. It is so worth it. I think that's a beautiful moment to end on. But before I let you go, we did talk a few moments ago about interviewing so many people on this podcast. And one of the most common themes is about serendipity, keeping a lookout for the messages from the universe, following their intuition, et cetera. So as a, a manifester, I'm going to see if we can manifest something for you here because some of the biggest names in business, VC funding and tech have either been guests or listened to this podcast. So is there a person you'd love to have a private breakfast or lunch with and why? Because he or she might just be listening to this. So let's see what we can manifest together. Who would that be? Oh, I got little butterflies in my heart here. Um, it would 150% be Richard Branson. He has been, from day one of becoming an entrepreneur, I, I think, has been my role model. Richard Branson is a living, breathing version of everything I believe in. Um, I lean into his uh, knowledge and wisdom all the time when I'm thinking about what I want to do next or how to lead li my life and my business. He's just one of the most incredibly inspiring leaders I have ever seen. Um, and he's one of the kindest leaders I've ever seen. And being able to sit down with him for lunch would be a huge dream come true. And just to like be in his energy, even just for a coffee would be so incredibly inspiring. So yeah, Richard would be my man. Awesome. Well, we will throw that out into the ether. <laughs> Let's see what we could manifest together. But before I let you go, for anybody listening wanting to find out more information about you, your book, the work you're doing, or just reach out and contact you or your team, what's the best starting point for everything? Yeah, the best starting point would be my website, jenniferjaneyoung.com. From there, you can click off into the different projects I have and businesses um, so that would be the best place to go. And you have my, all my social media links. I'm very active on social because I like to connect with people. Um, so that's what I, where I would lead people for sure. And once again, I said a few moments ago, technology works best when it brings people together. And my big takeaway from talking to you today is helping people give themselves permission to take leaps towards the life they've been dreaming of, to outgrow who they could have been, honor who they have always known they could become, but also leveraging technology along the way there's so much talk at the moment about technology replacing people but i think it's augmenting people helping people enhance their creativity rather than replace it maybe that's another topic for another day but just thank you for sharing your story today thank you so much neil this was great it's always an honor to spend time with you wow what a remarkable journey we've traversed today with jennifer jane young i think her insights on intuition risk-taking and embracing imperfection have truly illuminated the path to a more fulfilling life and career and i think her blend of intuitive guidance and technologically savvy and self-confessed nerd there is an inspiring model for all aspiring entrepreneurs and leaders so as we close today's episode let's take that key message from jennifer's book the power of saying yes to our inner voice and the transformative steps that we can take towards realising our dreams. Remember, technology is not just a tool. It is a companion on our journey to self-discovery and ultimately success. But if you've got a story you'd like to share, please, I invite you to email me now, techblogwriter at outlook.com. Remember, connect with me on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, just at Neil C. Hughes, stories like this that complement the human condition and how technology can enhance creativity. So I'm going to sign off now, but before I go, quick reminder, stay curious, embrace your inner voice, never stop exploring the endless possibilities that technology and intuition can offer. But until next time, 
in the words of Jeff, keep saying yes to your dreams. <laughs>